Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is galvanic cells. This is a galvanic cell. So you might think that you're not going to find one of these just lying around. Well, you're wrong. Look under your car's hood. This is your basic car battery. And yes, you'll also see them in chemistry. So we're going to run through how these things work. There are several parts to it. There are your metals. These will be dipped in a solution containing the same metal as an ion, Cu and Cu2+, zinc and zinc2+. The metals themselves are connected by a wire which runs through whatever they're powering, like your car. The solutions will be connected by a salt bridge. This con contains ions that will not take part in a reaction. That's be to make sure that, the, that these solutions remain neutral. As electrons travel from one side to the other, one will become more positive and the other more negative. By keeping them neutral, they can keep the reaction going. The last part are the anode and cathode. Oxidation will occur at the anode, and reduction will occur at the cathode. To remember this, use the mnemonic and ox red cat. Anode, oxidation, reduction, cathode. Simple. Here, there are two possible reactions that could occur. Copper becoming oxidized in, in le losing two electrons, zinc becoming reduced with those two electrons, or the other way around, copper getting reduced by two electrons to become neutral copper, and zinc getting oxidized. Which one will occur? Well, if you just hook this up to your car, the spontaneous one will occur. And we'll learn how to do that in a minute. However, you could also do the reverse reaction. You do this by reversing the electron flow and applying energy. That's the concept between rechar behind rechargeable batteries. Only you pick those specific elements because they're easier to recharge. Okay, over to spontaneity. Spontaneity is found using your standard electrode potential. Where will you get this? Most classes, will, you'll get a table with it, or you can find it in your textbook. Otherwise, it should just be attached to the problem. And your standard electrode potential is a voltage at one molar solutions, these, and at one atmosphere. In order to find the electrode potential of your cell, that's equivalent to the electrode potential at the cathode, subtracting the electrode potential of the anode. Why is this important? Well, if, it's if that E cell is greater than zero, your reaction is spontaneous. If it's below, not at all. Well, I've got the standard electrode potentials for copper and zinc here already. So let's try plugging them in here and figuring out which one is a spontaneous reaction. Let's take zinc to be at the cathode first. That means we're going to put it first in the equation. Negative 0.76, and we'll subtract copper at the anode, minus 0.34. That's clearly going to turn out negative. Since that's less than zero, we know that zinc cannot be at the cathode. Zinc won't be reduced. So we can take this above reaction and re erase it, where zinc is being reduced. That leaves us with this other one, where copper is being reduced instead. Let's test it out using our standard electrode potentials. That puts copper at the cathode. So then that's 0 0.34 minus zinc at the anode, negative 0 0.76. That gives us a positive number, 1.10. So there, that's the spontaneous reaction. This is how it's going to occur. That means that electrons will be coming to copper and leaving zinc. The electron flow is this way. And then you can identify the copper becomes the cathode and zinc is your anode. And you've done basically everything you can possibly do with a galvanic cell. Your chemistry teacher should be happy. To recap, galvanic cells are made up of a cathode and anode. Oxidation will occur at the anode, reduction will occur at the cathode, and ox red cat. There will be metals, and they will be dipped in a solution containing that metal as an ion. Electrons will flow through a wire that connects both metals, from one to the other. There will also be a salt bridge. The salt bridge will contain ions that don't react. These will maintain the neutrality of these two. If either of them don't become neutral in charge, then the reaction stops occurring. You figure out which reaction will occur, the spontaneous one, using standard electrode potential. At the cathode, minus the anode. And if it's greater than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. It'll occur. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.